In the last video, Categorical Syllogisms, Where to Put the X, Part 1, we determined that the shading of premise 1 here, all M or P, forced us in premise 2 of where to put that X. We really didn't have a choice of where to put it with respect to that M category that's shaded because the shaded region doesn't exist. So it wouldn't make sense to put the X in an area that doesn't exist with reference to the argument. But let's look at a different argument here, one that's going to make us have to make a decision. Here I've already diagrammed the first premise, which is universal, because as stated, when faced with a universal, as in premise 1, and a particular, premise 2, we diagram the universal first. I indicated that sometimes it's helpful for when we're trying to figure out how to diagram this Venn diagram here, it's sometimes easier to create a standalone one and then recreate it over here and make sure it matches up. And that's what we've done. So we've accurately diagrammed premise one, all SRP. So we can check off that first premise as completed. Now we want to diagram the second premise which is an O claim, which says that some M are not P. And our O claim is going to be represented by this horribly drawn green outline here. In other words, what we're saying is that some M, at least one M represented by the X, is going to exist not in the P class, and we know that it's going to exist in this highlighted green region here. So what we want to do is we want to accurately represent that over here. Let's do that. Let's, let's highlight that same region over here to get a better idea of where that X is going to go. And after we did that, you can see pretty quickly we've got two choices. The X can go here, or the X can go here. I guess additionally, it could go on the line. That's where it's going to go, but let's explain why it's going to go on the line. The key to remembering where to put the X here is to remember what categories we're talking about. We're talking about at least one M. Some M are not P. So it's going to go in this green highlighted region here, but since we're only talking about the X in relation to M and P, we have to remain neutral with regard to S. And so this line here is really the part that's going to be part of the S category. And we can't make any commitments about whether M is inside of this category, S, or not. If we were to put the X here, then we'd be saying that some M are not P, but we'd also be saying that some M are not S. So we can't do that. That's diagramming something that doesn't exist in the argument. And if we put it in region 2, sure, we'd be saying some M are not P, but we'd also be saying some M are S, or we'd be saying some S are M. They're logically equivalent. And we can't do that. That'd be saying something, that'd be diagramming something that's not said in the argument. It's not part of the claim. So the only way to accurately diagram the second premise is by putting the X on the line, which satisfies the requirement of being in that green region, saying that that's where it exists, that's where M exists, not in the P category, but we're remaining neutral with respect to S. And so this is the correct way to diagram this argument. So we've correctly diagrammed it. Now let's evaluate it to determine validity. If the conclusion some S are not P were true, we'd have an X in the orange region here. That X would have to be in the S class that's outside of the P class but it's not. It's on the line of the S category. It's on the line of the S class. And so this argument is invalid. 